Hi there Grade 8 and welcome back to Worksheet Cloud Maths. Today we are going to carry on with our series in um, focus on fractions and it is our third lesson today. What we're going to do today is we're going to look at how to solve some problems using fractions. We'll start off with relatively easy ones until you get into the swing of it and then we will carry on with a little more difficult ones. Um, please remember at any point if you are getting confused please pop an email to grade 8 at worksheetcloud.com and somebody will get back to you with an answer to your query or your question. Okay, so let's start with our problem solving with fractions. Okay, the first one is relatively straightforward and I'm sure you could probably do this in two seconds, but just let's go through it um, slowly. The girls hockey team won six games, lost three games and drew two games. What fraction of their games did they win? Now, as you can see, nothing in the problem is put in a fraction um, term. So we would need to make that up. Not make it up out of our heads, but make it up with the information that we've got. Okay? So if we were looking at what fraction of games they won, um, we need to make sure that we know how many games they played all together. So we could make up our own fraction, but just using words to explain it almost to ourselves. Um, the number of games that they played all together would be our denominator. Do you agree? Right. Okay. The number of games they, would, they won would be the numerator, because that's the fraction that we're trying to find out. Our base, our denominator, would be our total number of games. So how do we work that out? Well, it tells us they won six games, they lost three games, and they drew two games. So adding all those together would give us Total number of total number of games that they played. Okay, we would then say six plus three plus two to get our denominator, and then the number of games they won. It tells us in the first sentence that was six. Okay, so that would be our numerator. Okay, everybody happy so far? Great. All we now do is we look at our denominator and we see we need to add those numbers together. It would then give us six over eleven. We now look, remember what I've said to you in the last two lessons, always look to see if you can simplify. In this case, we can't, and so we can write our closing statement, they won six elevenths of their games. Guys, I know that some of your teachers at school probably don't require you to write a closing statement, but sometimes when you write that statement, you actually put the thing together in your mind and go, okay, that seems realistic, six elevenths of their games they won, um, it sounds right, let's carry on. Okay, If they had won 12 over 11 of their games, you would go, mm, that is not right. They can't win more games than they actually played. So then you would actually figure out there's a problem and you would go back and try and sort it out. So try and write that closing sentence, even if it is just for yourself. Okay, let's look at the next problem. Okay, Nick mowed three-fifths of the lawn yesterday. He mowed another quarter of the lawn today. What fraction of the lawn does he still need to mow? Okay, so we don't know. It doesn't tell us how much the whole lawn was. But if we were to put it as a fraction, it would be one whole. Okay, the whole lawn. He has mowed three-fifths of the whole lawn. And he's mowed a quarter of the whole lawn on two different days. One was yesterday. The other one was today. So probably he wants to find out what fraction he still needs to mow tomorrow. But what we need to do is we need to add the two fractions that he's already mowed and take it away from the whole lawn. So your opening number sentence would be 1 as being the whole lawn minus 3 over 5 plus 1 over 4. So 3 fifths plus a quarter. We're going to add that together first and then we're going to subtract it from the 1. And that's why we put it in brackets. Okay, right. So first thing we need to do, as you know, when we have um, denominators that are different, we find a common denominator. And for this one, we can use the common denominator of 20. Both 4 and 5 go into 20. And if um, you wanted to, you could just times your denominators together. Remember, I told you that in our first lesson. Multiply them together. 5 times 4 is 20, which means that you take your first numerator multiplied by your second denominator to get the 12. And then your second numerator times your first denominator to get the 5. So that will help you 
to calculate your numerators. Okay, so now that we've got our common denominator, we now add our fractions together. Okay, we keep the 1 minus there because we still have to take away from the whole. So 12 twentieths plus 5 twentieths gives us 17 twentieths. And now we've got to convert that 1 into a fraction, which in this case would be 20 over 20. And we say 20 over 20 minus 17 over 20, and it will give us 3 over 20. Again, you need to look. Can you simplify? No, you can't. So you can leave it like that and write your closing statement. Nick still needs to mow 3 twentieths of the lawn. Okay, everybody happy? Remember, these are the two fractions that we know, but we've got to take it away to find out what is left. And that's why we put that in brackets. Remember your order of operations. You have to do your brackets first. If you didn't put your brackets there, then you would be working from left to right. Okay, and then it wouldn't work out because you would have a subtraction and then an addition. Unless you did 1 minus 3 over 5 minus 1 over 4, then it would probably work out. So you'd have to be very careful on how you actually write that opening number sentence. Okay, right, let's move on to the next problem. In a full set of permanent teeth, one quarter are incisors, one quarter are, are premolars, and three-eighths are molars. What fraction of our teeth is made up of these three types? Okay, so in our mouths right now, at this time, we have four different types of teeth. One quarter are incisors, one quarter are premolars, and three-eighths are molars. And now we want to find out what fraction of our teeth is made up of these three types. Okay, so actually all this is is an addition calculation, but we now have got an addition of three fractions, whereas in our previous lesson, or well, especially the first lesson, we only dealt with two fractions. So what do we do? Okay, we still have to find a common denominator, but now it has to be common to all three, right? We can, what we can do is like I've done there, is we can see a quarter plus a quarter is two quarters and then find the common denominator. But if all three of these denominators were completely different, we could find one common den denominator. Sometimes that is quite difficult, so it might be better to work with the first two and then add on the third one. But the chances are that you're going to find a common denominator with all three. Okay, so here we go. We've added the quarter to the quarter because we can see that straight away it's two quarters. The, new, uh, the denominators are like denominators. And now we're going to add on three eighths. So now we've got quarter and eighths. We need to find a common denominator. You've got it. We can use eights. If you didn't want to use eight, you could use 12. You could use 16. You could use um, 24. Okay. It's completely up to you. It just might mean that later on you're going to simplify. You need to use what suits you, what you understand. Okay, right. So now we've got four eighths plus three eighths because we converted our two quarters to four eighths. Um, and we can now just add our numerators because our denominators are like denominators. And we're going to get seven eighths. Once again, let's check. Can we simplify it? No, we can't. That is then our answer. So our incisors, premolars, and molars make up seven eighths of the teeth. That means one eighth is made up of the canines, which is the other type of teeth that we have in our mouths. Right, everybody happy with that? Okay, let's try this one on your own. Okay, I'm going to give you the problem. I'll read it through with you, and then you pause the video and you try and work it out by yourself. Charlie wanted to make a snack combining a third of a bowl of granola with a quarter of a bowl of chopped banana and a half a bowl of yogurt. Would one bowl hold all these ingredients at the same time? Explain. Okay, so now you need to write a closing number sentence and you need to explain it. Pause the video now. You work that out. You come up with your answer as well as an explanation and we will then go over it together. Right, let's see how you did. Okay, we've got to add all our ingredients together and the ingredients are given in a fraction of the bowl. So a third of the bowl would be granola, a quarter of the bowl is chopped banana and a half of the bowl is yogurt. So what do we do? We add all that together. 
So we've got all unlike denominators. Let's try and find a common denominator. As I said to you, you can work with the first two fractions and then add on the next fraction, or you can find a common denominator for all of them. All right? As I've done there, find a common denominator for all of them all at once. So we've used 12 as the denominator. 3 goes into 12 four times. 4 times 1 is 4. So that gives us our first fraction. 4 goes into 12 three times. 3 times 1 is 3. That's our second fraction. And as we know, a half is 6 over 12. But you could go 2 goes into 12 six times. 6 times 1 is 6. All right? All our denominators are the same. They are like denominators, which means we can now add our numerators together. Okay? 4 plus 3 is 7. 7 plus 6 is 13 over 12. Doesn't look quite right, does it? Let's simplify that. We end up with a mixed number of 1 and 1 twelfth. What was your reasoning here? Okay? Would one bowl hold all these ingredients? No, definitely not. And why not? Because 1, 1 and 1 twelfth is more than a whole. So let's have a look at um, the reasoning. The bowl would not hold all the ingredients at the same time because these ingredients add up to more than a whole and the bowl represents a whole. So you would have a very overflowing bowl if you tried to put all those ingredients into one bowl. So actually, Charlie, if he worked this out before the time, would realize he can't use that bowl. If he's going to do a third, a half and a quarter, it's going to add up to more than what the bowl can hold. Okay, and that's why I say, if you actually reason it out and you write your closing number sentence, you are forced to look at your answer in relation to what the problem has presented. And then you will reason it out to yourself that actually 1 and 1 twelfth cannot fit into a bowl. Right, let's go on to our next problem. This is another one for you to do. Okay, there's the problem. Let's read it through together and then you can try it on your own. Lebo spent two-fifths of his school holiday near the sea. He then was due to spend a further two-thirds of his school holiday in the mountains. But this was cut short because of the COVID-19 lockdown, and he had to go home um, a sixth of the time into his mountain stay. What fraction of his holiday was he actually away? Okay, pause the video. Read through the problem again to yourself. If you need to draw a little di diagram, you're welcome to do that. Um, and so that you can work it out and you can reason it through in your own head. Right, let's go over it together. Okay, we've got two-fifths plus two-thirds minus one-sixth. Why do we go two-thirds minus one-sixth? Because he was, the two-thirds he spent in the mountains, but this was cut short by a sixth. He had to go home a sixth of the way through, so he only actually spent a sixth of the time that he should have spent in the mountains there because he had to go home because of the lockdown. So we'll take the two-thirds and we'll subtract the one-sixth, see what we get left with, and then we add that to the two-fifths that he already spent at the sea, and we would figure out how much of his holiday he actually spent away. Okay, so we are now going to find like denominators so we can do our subtraction. And it would be 4 over 6, so 2 thirds converts to 4 over 6. Why? Because 3 goes into 6 twice, and 2 times 2 is 4. Okay? 4 over 6 minus 1 over 6 will give us 3 over 6. And we've got 2 fifths plus the 3 six. Again, we have to find a common denominator. Okay? And there we would use 30. Okay? 5 goes into 36 times. 6 times 2 is 12. 6 goes into 30. 5 times and 5 times 3 is 15. So now we're going to add our numerators together because we have the same denominators. We have like denominators. Okay, 12 plus 15 gives us 27 over 30. Again, we can simplify. Please don't forget to simplify. And we would get 9 over 10. Okay, so what is our closing um, answer? Our closing sentence would be Lebo was away for a total of 9 tenths of his holiday. So he actually got a very good holiday in. He got most of his holiday in. He just had to cut it short by a tenth because he had to go home because of the lockdown. Does this make sense? Have a look, read your problem again, 
Have you answered the question firstly? And does the answer make sense to with, with what the information you were given? Okay, it seems to. So 9 over 10 of his holiday, he was away. The rest of the time he had to be at home because of the lockdown. Right, let's carry on. Here's another one. Three quarters of the students in the athletics team are boys. Three quarters of these boys are in grade eight. What fraction of the athletics team is grade eight boys, is made up of grade eight boys? Let's see what we're going to do. Okay, we've got to say three quarters of three quarters because three quarters of the boys are in grade eight um, and that is of the three quarters of all the boys in the athletics team. What does of represent? It is actually multiplication. So it would be three over four times three over four. And as you know, when we are multiplying fractions, we just multiply out our numerators, multiply out our denominators. And that would give me nine over 16. Okay, so nine sixteenths of the athletics team were boys. Let's just go over that one more time. Three quarters of the students in the athletics team are boys. So out of all the students in the athletics team, three quarters are boys, which means one quarter are girls. But we don't need to worry about that other one quarter. We just need to concentrate on the three quarters that are boys. Of the three quarters that are boys, three quarters of those boys are in grade eight. So now we need to find out what fraction of the whole athletics team are grade eight boys. So we'll go three quarters of three quarters. As you know, the of this stands for multiplication. It's the same thing. Three quarters times three quarters, we end up with nine over 16. We cannot simplify that. It stays the same. So nine sixteenths of the whole athletics team are boys. Okay, everybody happy? Let's go on. You try this one. Okay, Shenzi has a piece of rope, seven and four fifths meters long. He, if he cuts it into lengths of three quarters of a meter, how many pieces will he be able to cut? Okay, pause the video, you try and work it out, and then we will come back and go over it together. Read it carefully, even draw a little diagram if you want to. I always find that that really helps. If you put it into some version of a picture, then you can actually understand what operation you need to do. Right, let's try and go over it. Okay. There we have seven and four fifths is the total length of the rope that he has. He needs to cut it into pieces of three quarters, which means he's dividing up the total rope into three into pieces that are three quarters of a meter. Okay, so then what we're going to do is we are going to change our mixed number into an improper fraction. So we'll go five times seven is 35 plus the four is 39. We now have 39 over five. We're now going to tip and times our second fraction because we don't we can't divide it. We need to tip and times. So we're now timesing it by four over three. Okay, everybody happy? Right, now let's have a look. We can simplify, we can cross cancel here. Three goes into itself once, three goes into 39, 13 times. We can't do anything with the four and the five. It stays the same. Now we just multiply out and we're going to get 52 over 5 and that is 10 and 2 fifths because don't forget to simplify all right okay 10 and 2 fifths that is he will be able to cut 10 pieces again that's why we write our closing sentence because he can't cut 10 and 2 fifths pieces the 2 fifths doesn't matter it's what's going to be left over the 10 pieces are what he's going to have 10 whole pieces that are three quarters of a meter in length each okay Everybody understand. All right, so that's why that closing number sentence is actually quite important. Okay, thank you so much for watching this lesson. There are um, some problems in an activity for you to do. Um, and remember, if there's anything that you need to ask, any query that you have, don't forget to email um, at grade 8 at worksheetcloud.com. Okay. Looking forward to working with you again in our next lesson on Focus on Fractions number four. Thank you so much, guys. Goodbye for now.